Alright guys, check this out. I just made the world's laziest YouTube thumbnail creator. And guess what? It's running on this video right now. See this abomination? And AI made this on its own. And it's gonna keep making weirder ones and hopefully more clickable ones. So here's the deal. I'm gonna show you how I tricked an AI into doing my job. This might be the dumbest thing I've ever built or the most brilliant. Let's find out which. All right, let's illustrate the plan right in Paint, which is the greatest photo editor app at the market right now. How the hell do I make this canvas the right size? It's only 100% or 200%. Let's use the two big one then. So, first up, we need to see what kind of thumbnails we can make in Doll E. What the hell is going on? Just like that. If you're not using paint, you're falling behind. And you can update a video's thumbnail using YouTube API, which is just a way to talk to YouTube with code. Nice like that. I wanna use code for this because I want this to be completely automated. I don't wanna change the thumbnail all the time myself. So we have to make a loop where images from the Doll E or some other AI image generator go to YouTube and then based on YouTube data, I'm not sure which ones yet. There goes a command to the AI image generator and it creates a new thumbnail and then it's updated to YouTube again and this goes on and on. So the plan seems to be simple enough. Let's go to Doll E to see what kind of thumbnails we can create. So if I say make a YouTube thumbnail wide aspect ratio because YouTube thumbnails are wide aspect ratio. 10 amazing travel destinations. Those are pretty not good thumbnails. So this video is probably called this video's thumbnail is continuously updated by an AI. So let's see what kind of thumbnails it comes up with that title. I mean, these are not good probably, but could this actually be good? Because these are so bad that they are quite different from other thumbnails on YouTube. So let's say no text. It literally says without no text. This is literally a screenshot of a YouTube video. So it's not that great of a thumbnail. We need to come up with some other prompt for this one that doesn't involve YouTube thumbnail at all. One thing we could do, we could generate keywords about the title and then randomly select like five keywords and see what kind of image that generates. And that could also be used later for the updating of the thumbnails. So we could just randomly select keywords if we have a long list of keywords. So let's do that. Generate 200 keywords for a video called This video's thumbnail is continuously updated by an AI Because these are so similar Let's say we can select one of these And then maybe a style So let's generate 100 different styles Like Renaissance anime cartoon sitcom be created Excellent Now let's see what kind of image this comes up with If I choose one of these, so let's say like intelligent AI video tools and magic realism. I don't know what that is, but it sounds great. That's actually much better. These images are actually pretty good. So let's use this technique for our thumbnail generation. We'll later implement it in code. And now let's see what kind of data we can pull out from the YouTube API to see if our current thumbnail is actually better than the updated thumbnail. So these are all the stats you can pull out from the YouTube API. Views, red views, comments, likes, dislikes, average view duration, average view percentage, annotation click-through rate, which is like if you have a link or like uh, watch this next video. If people click on that, it counts that. Okay, so this doesn't have the one I wanted, which is CTR, meaning how many people click on the thumbnail when they see it. Average view percentage, I guess it's the Second best one. Okay, the next step is to implement this in code. Mm. Okay guys, it's actually day two of this project. I wanted to show you guys how cool of a thumbnail Dolly just made. Like this is super cool thumbnail. I'm not sure if it's clickable, but like it looks very cool. And this one as well actually. I'm I'm actually pretty excited about this project now because these thumbnails look very cool. Okay guys, our code test version is ready now. So this thumbnail should be updated on the website 
on a video that is hidden. So let's see if that's the case. And it actually is. You can see that my video called testing that is hidden from everybody else actually has that thumbnail now. So that's very cool. Our code is working on some level. I'd need to make some adjustments. Let's see how fast I can make it. Okay, it's been a couple of hours. And this is how the code works right now. It checks the average view duration and views twice per day. If the current average view duration is better than the one the code has stored for the previous best thumbnail, that means that the current thumbnail is better than the last one and is updated to be the best one. In this case, it also generates a more extreme version of that thumbnail. First time it adds the word extreme in the prompt to the AI image generator Dolly. If even that thumbnail turns out to be better, then it adds super extreme to the prompt next time. Then super mega extreme, then extreme like your life depends on it, and lastly, make it so extreme that mankind has never seen anything like it. Pretty excited for those thumbnails if we get there. If the extreme thumbnail doesn't work, then it just generates a new one with random keywords like AI powered media tools, pastel art. I actually added later four more keywords that are way more important than the other ones mentioned before this. You see, I was watching Aprilin Alter's thumbnail breakdown video and I realized that all the best thumbnails have four elements. I tried all of this in the prompts and they made the images way better for YouTube thumbnail purposes. First being emotion. You can see in these thumbnails that they have some kind of emotion. That's why the code will randomly select one emotion out of six basic human emotions for image generation. Second one is contrast. Contrast makes things pop. And thumbnails have three different ways to make this happen. Luminosity, meaning light versus dark elements. Saturation, meaning colors versus grayscale. And lastly, hue contrast, meaning complementary colors. Also, one of these will be randomly selected for the thumbnail generation. Third element, what good thumbnails always have, is a main character. Having a main character makes the thumbnail more clear and that's what you want. You want the thumbnail to be simple enough for people to understand it immediately. So my code will just always add has a main character in the prompt. And also because often the main character is a close-up of a person, 50% of the time it will also put close-up of the main character to the prompt. And lastly what best thumbnails have is attention direction. Thumbnail creators want you to focus on some point immediately to make the thumbnail faster to understand. They direct your attention using arrows or differences in scale, blur and depth. So the code will also choose one of these in the prompt. You can find the link to Aprilin's video in the description. It then keeps the best thumbnail until a certain amount of views, which start at 200 views but gets higher if the video starts to get traction. Or if the video doesn't get views at all for three days. If one of those conditions is met, then the new thumbnail is updated. And then again later it checks the average view duration and views on that one and the loop goes on and on. Hopefully that gets the best thumbnail ever on this video. The last thing to do is to put this code in the cloud so it can run 24-7. The weird thing is that I can't make this fully functional in the cloud before I upload this video. So this is goodbye, thanks for watching and subscribe.